the mid-80s, Rosalind Plowright was at the height of her career, a world-class soprano performing opposite Pavarotti and Domingo and delighting the critics with her interpretation of Verdi's big heroines. Even motherhood merited only the briefest of pauses, with Rosalind returning to touring and performing just weeks after the births of both her children. Nothing, it seemed, could stop her. But two years later, something gave. Her soprano voice changed. It was the start of a professionally challenging period during which she had to find a new singing range. Thankfully, she succeeded, and she's about to open at the Royal Opera House in Stephen Sondheim's musical Sweeney Todd. Earlier, I talked to her about her role as the mad, sex-obsessed beggar woman and how appealing she finds it. As an actress, um, very appealing because there's quite a few challenges there. As, a, as an opera singer, a bit more difficult because any sign of an operatic tone and it's been totally quashed by the music staff. You know, because this they, is Sondheim, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? that's yeah. right. And, and the, the role of a beggar woman, although she has a few operatic moments in inverted commas, generally she um, has to sound quite weird and loopy. And um, in fact, I was gaily singing one of my sections and I actually got a note from Sondheim himself saying, Please, you know, don't sing this. Just uh, sh shriek it. Sound totally demented. And <laughs> so, I, you know, there I was, having spent hours learning these notes, which because sometimes music is quite tricky. And suddenly, I I'm, have to abandon all this and, and and sort of speak and shriek the role. Then. And what about the acting, Rosalind? Because um, you're this in the flesh, very tall, very elegant woman. I mean, playing a beggar, a yeah. broken old beggar, was that? Well, there therein lies the challenge. Um, you know, I've had notes. So oh, you're too statuesque. I mean, I'm going on bent double at the waist, looking like <laughs> the witch out of Hansel and Gretel. But I'm still apparently too statuesque and each day they've made me look worse and worse you know my makeup's become more haggard and my hair's become greasy and stringy and but you know, it's wonderful to sort of lose what I really have been used to doing in the past you know the the statuesque um, roles that I've done like I'm Neris and all my days as a, as a Verdi soprano you know standing up to my full height well I, you know, in a way, I've had enough of that, and, and now I'm really thrilled to be doing these sort of character parts, as it were. Even if you're a bent double. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're going to talk about uh, one of the toughest challenges in your career in a moment, because that is how your voice has developed over time. But before we do, let's hear a little bit of you singing as a soprano, as Leonora in Il Travatore. D'Amour Solali Rosé from Il Trovatore. That soprano voice, has that gone forever now then, Rosalind? That particular tone that you just heard, definitely, yes, yes. And this happened a few, not immediately after you, you'd given birth, but a little while later. Tell me how your voice changed after you had your children in the late 80s. I just noticed that everything became even darker. Vocally, I'm talking about vocally heavier. My voice became more difficult to manoeuvre. I mean, my voice always was heavy and rich, but there was something in childbirth that uh, made it drop even more. <laughs> because the thing was, you, you sang um, during your second pregnancy, almost throughout the entire pregnancy, mm -hmm. and you said that your voice was you know, better than it had ever been while you were actually pregnant. Yes. So these changes happened sort of gradually afterwards, didn't they? Yes, you? yes, they did. Um, in a way, during my first two pregnancies, um, I, I didn't really stop, except, well, before Daniel was born, yes, I did have about four months. I thought, well, I'd better take these four months off, and I was extremely bored. In fact, I could have gone on to the bitter end, and that's actually when the voice really bloomed. As, as with Katie, I, I sang Norma when I was eight months pregnant, <laughs> and... Uh, this is a, a hugely challenging role, you know, one of the great dramatic high points of the soprano repertory. But it was after Katie that something sort of hit me. I just felt a, quite a, um, 
a big change and everything in this sort of repertory became much, much harder, mm. trying to sustain the height of the roles. And you had a, a quite a tough time as well because, you know, this was obviously happening extremely publicly when you were performing and, and mm. some of the critics gave you a very, very hard time. I mean, did you, I mean, <laughs> did you sort of realise, did you accept what was happening? Was that the hardest thing, to accept that your voice was changing and how to deal with that once you'd mm. grasped that? Did that make it hard? It actually took me a long time to accept it. I thought, no, this is this will this will go. I shall sure it'll all come back. It'll all be like it was before. But it didn't, and um, I eventually did accept that um, my voice had changed. And um, and it wasn't until I was still doing a soprano part in in Il Tritico in 1998 at, at English National Opera. And Richard Armstrong, music director of, of Scottish opera, heard me and, and said, why don't you sing Amneris for me? And I thought, wow, there's an idea. And it, oh, God, it was just a joy for me to sing this role because it, it just felt like it fitted me like a glove. And the thing was that you'd actually, had you started um, sort of in the mezzo range at the beginning of your career? Well, in my very early days, they didn't quite know what to do with me because <laughs> of, of the rich nature of my voice. So they did actually give me little mezzo roles in my early 20s. Um, but, you know, I, I was still was able to float around on the top, which is something that I didn't discover until I won this big operatic competition in Sofia. And that's when my international career started and I was given all these wonderful roles. Um, like you've just heard. <laughs> I mean, in fact, that the potential sort of made itself known even earlier than that, Rosalind, because I believe that when you were just 12 years old, you were driving back from a production of the Mikado with your father and you <laughs> sang what you just heard. That's right. Note perfect yes. in the car. And yes, I, I'd been listening to the Mikado and it was the role of Katisha that really impressed me. You know, this big, plummy, dark voice. And I was, you know, I've always had an ear for music and I remembered what she'd sung and I started bellowing forth in the car and my father sort of nearly drove off the road in astonishment, you know, he'd been playing in the orchestra. And that was the beginning of my voice, really, as I, as it is today. My tone has never really changed and it started then when I was 13, I guess. Yeah. Well, let's come full circle and let's hear a little bit of you playing Amneris, the Egyptian princess and jealous love rival of her slave, Aida. <laughs> singing the role of Amneris in Aida and Sweeney Todd opens on Monday at the Royal Opera House. <laughs> 